time you sit down to work with the breath. Remember the story of the foolish, inexperienced cow. The cow is in a nice meadow on a hillside. It's got plenty of green grass and water. But it sees over another hillside there's another meadow, and it starts wondering, well, what's the grass like over there? What's the water like over there? And so because it's a foolish, inexperienced cow, it sets out. It doesn't know how to go down the hillside, cross over the ravine, go up the other hillside, and so it gets lost in between. It doesn't get to the other hillside and can't get back to the place where it originally was. It stands for the mind that thinks that when we get one of those tamed states of concentration, there's some place out there, not right where you are. The trick is to learn how to stay in your meadow. So the grass really does have a chance to grow. So you really do have a chance to enjoy the water right where you are. And the place where you are will develop into a state of concentration. This is why it's so important that before you start working with the breath here, working with the breath there, you find at least some spot where it's comfortable and you focus on that. If you make another comparison, it's like, starting a fire on a windy day. You have your little tiny, tiny fire there, so you cup it in your hands and make sure that it doesn't go out. At the same time, you don't cut off the oxygen so much that the fire goes out. Just sort of cup it just right, have your one little spot, and after a while it'll catch. And then it'll spread throughout all the, the timber you've piled up. But it's important that you get that first little flame going. That's the same with the breath. Find at least one little spot and stay right there for a while. It doesn't have to be a big spot, just a little tiny spot. And content yourself with that little tiny spot for the time being. And then after a while it'll catch. And then you can start spreading that sense of comfort through different parts of the body. Because you do it, you're working from a position of strength. You're working from a position of comfort, not a position of desperation or, or anxiety or restlessness. Say, so, well, this has to be like that, that has to be like this. Just content yourself with what you got and then allow that to grow. And you find that there really is a sense of well-being that comes with the practice. Remember the word jhana comes from the verb for burning, and it's not just any kind of burning, it's the burning of an oil lamp. When an oil lamp burns, the flame is steady. It may not be a big flame, but its, its steadiness is what helps it illuminate the room. If it were a flickering flame, sometimes you'd have illumination, sometimes you wouldn't. It wouldn't be all that helpful, no matter how bright it was. But it's the steadiness of the flame that enables you to read, even in an otherwise dark room. It's the same with your state of concentration. You stay steadily with your one spot. It's the steadiness, it's the consistency that allows this to become really comfortable. So in the beginning it may not be all that comfortable. Just a you know, okay spot, someplace in the body. The breath feels okay coming in, feels okay coming out. But you find that if you allow yourself to settle into it, that a lot of the problem with, with the mind is that it's that basic tension where it's ready to jump at the moment's notice. Like a cat that's settled in one spot, but it's all coiled to, to spring. If you could take a picture of the mind, that's what the mind would look at. It focuses on an object, part of it's ready to spring away from that object as soon as it doesn't like it, as soon as it runs into something unpleasant, because that's the way it's been dealing with objects all along. But here you're allowed to settle into one little spot. And that sense of tension in the mind begins to, to melt away. And you melt into the object of your concentration. And then from there it just sort of spreads into the body. Think of it as a melting into the body. And you find that it goes a lot better than if you're constantly fighting and figuring things out too much. You've got to learn how to take just the right amount of pressure, just the amount of right of pushing. 
not too much, not too little. The more sensitive you are in your meditation, the better it goes. So you've got a meadow someplace in your body. It may not be a big one, but it's there. You don't sit around worrying about where the next meadow is going to be, or what the other meadows are around you. Just stay right where you are, and the, the grass will grow, the water will flow. And you find that right where you are starts to develop. That's the kind of concentration you can really live with. In other words, it's the kind of concentration you can pick up with you and take with you wherever you go. Not where you pre-fashion things too much and preconceive things too much, and you have to do this and have to do that and adjust this and add that, and it all becomes very theoretical. There has to be kind of a Just an inner sense, okay, it feels just right, right here. It feels good, and you can carry it around with you. You can identify where that good feeling is. And you carry that with you as much as you can, wherever you go. That's the kind of concentration that grows, and it's the kind of concentration that seeps into your life and begins to make a difference in how you think and how you act and how you speak, because it's there all the time. It doesn't require too much fashioning. There's a little tiny bit looking after it, but it's it's not based on what you've read in books, but just a, a sense of well-being right here. You've got your little spot, and you take it with you. John Fuang once said in Thai, it was mindfulness and concentration. It's a little tiny thing, but you have to keep at it all the time. The statement sounded better in Thai because it was a pun. There's the word nit, which means little, but it also the word nit, which means constant, constantly. Spelled differently, but pronounced the same way. So it's a little tiny thing that you do constantly. And when it comes from this beginning sense of well-being, then it's a lot more stable and you can maintain it a lot longer. And there really is a sense of well-being that kind of glows throughout the body and the mind. when you allow it to happen, when you allow the grass to grow, when you allow the water to flow, or in the image of the flame, when you just allow it, give it enough quiet space in order to catch hold. There's that talk by John Lee where he says that you know, big things start from little things. So sometimes you have to content yourself with just a little bit of concentration, a little, a little comfortable spot, but you stick at it constantly. It's like that one banana tree that you plant, and after a while it'll grow more banana trees. So you take the seeds out of the banana, in Thailand they have banana with seeds, and you plant them. And after all, you've got a whole banana orchard, or even better, mangoes. You've got that one tree that you take really good care of. You don't worry about the rest of the orchard yet. You just got your one tree, and then after all, it gives mangoes, and then you can plant a whole orchard with what you got from the one tree, and at the same time, eat some of the mangoes. Enjoy yourself. After all, this is the part of the path where the Buddha explicitly mentions rapture, pleasure, ease. If you don't have that sense of well-being, it gets very dry. But as you're planting your mangoes and eating the flesh, at the same time you find that the path becomes a really nice place to be, a good path to follow. Not only because you know it's going to take you to a good place, but it's a good path to be on while you're there. You're not going through the desert. You're going through lush countryside. And there's plenty to keep your energy level up all along the way, if you know how to use it right.